Well, we uh, got more stuff to talk about here. Let's uh, get into what uh, the updates on the SITS and the FBI report, which was pretty interesting. Yeah, so I found this pretty funny. Like, I think this is yet another area where this ridiculous narrative around the riot at the Capitol on January 6th is falling apart. You know, we've had quite a bit of just like completely false reporting on this. There was the cop, Brian Sicknick, who was allegedly bludgeoned to death by a Trump, Nazi, Taliban, terrorist, fascist, whatever, however many, you know, insults you can string together, uh, when really his death was ultimately ruled uh, for natural causes. He had no head trauma. There was no reason to believe he was beaten to death. Uh, reporting was completely wrong, but that claim floated around for weeks. And in fact, people probably still believe it to this day. Like you probably can still encounter random progressives on Twitter who think this cop was beaten to death. Uh, we had the zip ties guy uh, who you know, was seen with these plastic cuffs uh, in his hands in the Capitol. Uh, he was touted as proof that this was some kind of organized plot to uh, kidnap politicians and I, I don't know, I guess execute them or something or try them for treason. I don't know what their plan was supposed to be, but he was touted as evidence of that. Uh, that guy actually had picked up the zip ties inside the building, though. He didn't bring them in there. They belonged to the police, and he just found them. And in fact, there was even some audio uh, that came out in court where the guy was talking to his mom, who he, weirdly, I guess, was there with him at the Capitol. He went there with his mom. And she was basically saying, like, we don't want to use these. Like, we just don't want the cops to have them. So, like, that was even further debunked that this was proof of some kind of, uh, you know, uh, organized plot. I'm sure there's more stories that I'm leaving out, just other times where this narrative has totally fallen apart. But now we have this Reuters report uh, saying that the FBI found no evidence that the so-called insurrection was actually planned or organized really at all. Uh, they said there was scant evidence of that. Like there was no deliberate coordination beyond like there were a couple small groups of people who kind of talked about entering the Capitol beforehand amongst each other. But the FBI says that nobody even in those groups had clear plans of what they would do when they got inside the building. Uh, and honestly, this is pretty obvious to anyone who wasn't just a complete hysteric throughout this whole thing. Like it clearly wasn't an organized coup plot or any attempt to, to quote unquote overturn the election results. Like, what does that even mean? Well, how would they have done that? What were they supposed to do? They're gonna go in and take selfies at Pelosi's desk and thereby seize the reins of the federal government and put Trump in office forever. Like just no part of this plot makes sense. And I guess part of what they're saying is that these rioters were stupid and that they had incoherent plans themselves. But no, I don't think they were that stupid that they thought they were gonna be able to do anything like this. Um, but there are now literally millions of people who are die hard, 10,000% convinced that this was a genuine terrorist insurrection plot, like a serious threat to take power and install a dictatorship. Like that is sort of the story that like a lot of the left half of America is now pushing. And it's unfortunate, like I kind of, I don't know, I think I'm pretty good at talking to people who come from very radically different viewpoints, but I don't know how to communicate with the people who are convinced about this, who have just fully bought into like the, you know, CNN, MSNBC, Democratic kind of narrative about an insurrection. It's hard to, to even, you know, to, to your, our realities are so different, it's hard to even reach them. Um, and so far, I think this FBI assessment, I think it is just a report in Reuters. Um, the last I saw it, it was not officially confirmed. But even if it were, I don't think that would be enough to dispel this whole insurrection story. Like, it's so firmly entrenched now. And, and especially since we've had these other stories that have fallen apart, and that did not seem to sway a lot of people. So unfortunately, it does seem like we are stuck with this narrative for some time to come, that this this is going to be used to define and frame political issues in our country for probably years now to come. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, Will. And uh, yeah, I've had the, the same thing where even people who would agree like on foreign policy issues or something like that, for whatever reason, are diehard in belief that this was a, a coup attempt. Now, Will, it's interesting because I've never seen a coup attempt where all the coup plotters were home by dinner and had given up. But uh, that was <laughs> more or less the case. I mean, this thing did end in the afternoon. It's not like they went all night, uh, you know. Biden's nomination was confirmed later that day. In fact, if anything, this took wind out of the sails of, you know, the people arguing and, and trying to put up a protest uh, against Biden's confirmation. A lot of the, the congressmen who are going to, uh, you know, make arguments on the, the House or the Senate floor or whatever uh, decided not to do that because of, uh, you know, the, these events. And so it, it just it just wasn't a coup. You know, what? what's funny, well, there's some lady on Twitter who's like a never Trump Democrat strategist or whatever. And a week ago, she was tweeting out that, don't you remember the coup on the sits? And then this week, she's tweeting out, it's so obvious that Trump set a booby trap for Biden with his uh, Taliban deal. 
And so, you know, which one is it, Will? Was this a long con plot, uh, you know, in trap, to, you know, for the Democrat president? Or was he trying to coup to what? Get himself in his own Afghan booby trap? Like, lady, you got to make up your mind on what he was going for here. Uh, but there's so much of, of like that level of hysterics. And here you have a report from the FBI under the Biden administration. You know, there, there's no reason to think that they would have uh, not found evidence like the Mueller report. If there was evidence there, they were they were looking for it. They were going to find it, and they just didn't find it because it doesn't exist. You know, um, for people who saw the videos and everything that happened on the set, certainly there were some ugly scenes. You know, uh, people beat up, were beating up cops. Cops were beating up people. People broke down some windows. Um, that a kind of woman stuff. got shot to death. Yeah, Ashley Babbitt got shot, but that was the end of it. You know, once Ashley Babbitt got shot, people left. That's not the way yeah. coups go. You know, that, that's so important to point out here. You know, it, it certainly wasn't just like a peaceful protest. Saying that is ridiculous. But it def, it was far short of an insurrection. And maybe a, a riot protest is like a good way to describe it. Um, right. So one of the things, Will, that's really interesting about all this is how just the Justice Department has gone after every anybody who was there. And this, in a sense, hasn't surprised me. I kind of thought that, you know, government was vindictive and would do stuff like this. Uh, but at the same time, it's getting to the level of absurdity now uh, with the number of people who simply entered the Capitol and walked around. And, you know, they're. We're definitely there's definitely videos of police allowing people into the Capitol, right? And so that's problematic. Yeah. Also, there's people that I'm sure, you, you know, got it didn't see like the door broken into or something like that. And so by the time they're walking in, they're just walking into the door. And as long as you're not doing anything violent in there, like if you're like desecrating something, all right, then you're in good charge. I I get it. But if you're not doing that, then, uh, you know, it's hard to see, like, what the people who didn't, like, break down the doors, didn't get the assault, the cops are actually, you know, being tried for here. But uh, there's this guy who works for InfoWars, as a, or at least did as a reporter, uh, Owen Schroyer. And somebody narked on him to the feds because, he, you know, they knew he was at the rally and everything and was on the stage with Alex Jones. Uh, but apparently he was on the stage on the east side of the Capitol. And as best I could tell, this is outside. This is in, in, inside the Capitol building, Will. And yeah. uh, there are tons of people outside that day, but he has now been charged for being there. One thing I will say about this is um, he apparently had his court date on Friday and uh, didn't show up for whatever reason. I think the charges were announced pretty recently. So, uh, yeah. but anyways... After he didn't show up, there was a bench warrant, or there was not a bench warrant issue, which almost always happens when you didn't show, don't show up to a court hearing, and they rescheduled it for September 23rd, a month from now. And so, uh, for that reason, it didn't sound like maybe the government and the prosecution or the somebody involved on the government side wasn't interested in taking this particular charge too seriously, it seems. But all the same, very disturbing. I mean, this guy does work for a media outlet, and he was just standing there, you know, as best I could tell. Uh, you know, wasn't like trying to break down a door or anything like that. And so this uh, this charge is pretty disturbing. Well, uh, if you're on the wrong side of things and in the wrong place, they're going to charge you. Yeah, it's weird. I have seen footage of Alex Jones that day and like begging people to stop saying like, you know, like he, we think the election's rigged, but don't, you know, don't do this. This ain't the way to do it. So like if anything, it seemed like the InfoWars guys were not super encouraging people to, to go and do this, you know? Yeah. 